Hey everybody, it's aggressively average Rocket League content creator Grifflicious, and I'm going to do something I typically don't do. I try really hard to make the best tutorials that I can, and in doing so, I do my very best to also not bash other content creators or advice givers in the community. So let's change that. Today I'm going to be starting this list of Rocket League advice that I want to bitch about, and we are going to be starting with... Knowing how to hit the ball hard and with power is an invaluable skill to have, yet what should come alongside learning this mechanic is a healthy dose of when and why. I don't know the exact origins of this, but the just hitting the ball hard will get you out of plat and diamond is dog shit, borderline health threatening advice. The amount of games I'm in where players have ample amounts of space and time to control the ball and instead choose to just full send the goddamn thing back down the other end of the field is nausea inducing. Unless you're under considerable amounts of pressure or need to make a big clear in order to reset to collect boost and buy time for your team, stop banging the ball down the field. A critical piece to ranking up in Rocket League is being aware that as you rank up, you're consistently being matched up against players who are at your skill level, meaning the same mechanics and playstyle you're capable of are ones that your opponents are typically capable of as well. So while you're still playing your high gold mid plat boomer ball, they're starting to learn how to make catches and control the play. Does that mean you want ever catch someone out with a solid full court bang? Of course not. But as you rank up, those moments become far less common. Instead, what you should be learning to do is not just hit the ball hard, but learn how to control and direct the ball. This way you have the ability to control the situation and can use your knowledge to make touches with both direction and intention. Let's discuss how you can turn this into this. Controlling the ball in Rocket League has three critical components, space, time, and mechanics. Now, before you go full comment crazy telling me how you don't have mechanics, this is the part where I'm going to teach you those mechanics. Before we get there, however, we need to address the first two points. For my fellow programmers out there, space and time can best be easily addressed with a basic if-then statement. Whenever you have or are going after a ball, your first question as the aggressor needs to be, am I being contested? If the answer is no, then you have both space and time at your disposal. If the answer is yes, then you need to use what time you do have to assess where the open space on the field is. Let me explain. Any uncontested, unoccupied area on the pitch is open space. Whether that's the ground, wall, or air, your first move before you even touch the ball should be to survey the field, take a quick inventory of where everyone is, and attempt to progress the play in the most advantageous way possible. A good way to look at this is by projecting an imaginary cone from the front of your car outward that expands out to the edges of your field of view. The further away your opponents are, the more of that cone of space is available to you. The closer they are, the more you need to consider how they can affect your possession and the subsequent available space you have. So if you find yourself in a situation in which your cone of space is limited by pressure, you need to be utilizing the space you do have to its fullest extent. Now when it comes to Rocket League mechanics, we have a variety that ranges from simple to execute to difficult to master. Thankfully, when it comes to basic ball control, the vast majority rests more on the simple to execute side of that spectrum. What truly allows them to shine isn't their difficulty, but rather the knowledge and experience of the player performing them. Often we hear people say that having good fundamental mechanics is key to advancing in Rocket League. Well, what are fundamental mechanics? They seem to exist in this rather nebulous space between driving, jumping, and flipping, and dribbling, shooting, and aerials. Since one end of this is just basic car control and the others are actual mechanics, I'd like to widen that gap a little bit and throw in what I believe are actual fundamental mechanics. These are things like catches, pops, grounding, power slides, standard air roll, and braking. Yes, braking is on this list. Most of you lower level players would be shocked if you knew just how many mistakes you made just because you refused to slow down, but that's another video. The reason I believe these are fundamental mechanics is twofold. One being that the inputs to do each of them require one or two buttons to execute them. The second is that each of them not only are the basis for basic car control and ball control, but they are also the basis for nearly every advanced mechanic in the game. Catches turn into dribbles, which turn into flicks. Pops turn into ground to air dribbles. Grounding leads to wall to air dribble setups, power slides, and air roll are the basis for nearly every recovery mechanic. And these are just single use cases for each. The more time you spend performing each of these mechanics, the more you'll begin to see the vast potential of each of them, as well as how to use one or two of these mechanics in combination with more advanced mechanics. So now then, how do we train these fundamentals? We do so by simulating situations in which they can be used. The beauty of training these is that anyone on any platform can do this and it can all be done in free play. Once loaded in, we'll need to make sure that you 
you have the free play input for pass ball bound to our controllers. This is the primary input that we will be using to train. Once we have that set up, we want to position ourselves either in front of our goal or at some point on our end of the field. Press the pass ball button and try to catch the ball before it hits the ground. We do this by deadening the ball with our car, either by timing our touch with the side of the car just before the ball would hit the ground or by receiving the ball with the car, which involves a slight adjustment away from the ball just before impact. From here, our goal is to control the ball and maintain possession as we advance towards the other end of the field. Next, I want to talk about pops and grounding. These are merely opposite sides of the same coin. Much like catches, the only difference between these three is at what point in the ball coming towards us do we make contact. In order of timings, grounding is done first, catches are second, and pops are third. In order to make a successful pop, your touch on the ball needs to be just after the ball makes contact with the ground. This way, we can deflect the ball up and away from us as it's coming up off the ground. It is possible to do a catch pop, which is where you pop the ball off your car rather than the ground. Note, these require a slightly different timing in the follow-up since the impact of the ball will depress your car's suspension against the ground, meaning you need to wait a slight bit longer to jump or else you risk your car failing to take off properly. Finally, with grounding, our main focus is to put the ball on the ground. Naturally, we can do this with a catch, but for the purposes of redirecting the flow of the play, our goal is to put the ball on the ground and in a direction we intend to follow up. The simplest way to achieve this is with a low single jump, meeting the ball in the air and directing the ball downwards. Note, you should be doing your best to make contact with the ball as squarely as possible with the nose of your car in order to reduce as much unwanted impact recoil as possible. From here, we can land and follow up the ball. As you progress in this, you should start incorporating things like wave dashes into this mechanic. Since we only use one jump, you still have your second jump to do a landing wave dash which will help us stay close to the ball without committing any boost to do so. The last two grounding techniques are done either by flipping into the ball or flipping after we touch the ball. These are pre-flips and post-flips, respectively. Between the two, pre-flips are the more difficult to pull off since you not only have to time your flip in order to make the desired contact on the ball, but you also have to aim your flip towards your intended target. I tend to find myself using pre-flips in situations where I'm cutting it close on the approach and need to make up a little extra ground in order to secure the touch. Post-flips, on the other hand, are a tremendous technique to start training, especially if you've begun to learn walled air dribbles. In a post-flip, we want to make our grounding touch and then flip towards the ball. The implications of this technique are that we not only continue our possession of the ball, but we do so in a way that maintains fluidity and pace. In cases where our grounding touch directs the ball further away from us, it serves as a gap closer that, again, we can use to help conserve boost. In other cases in which our flip makes contact with the ball, it allows us to create space between us and the ball to help set up things like chips for ground dribbles, bounce dribbles, a run up for walled air dribbles. Oh, and it can also do this. But again, that's for another video. So now that you're aware of what these fundamentals are, I hope that you will not only train them, but begin to use them in your games. Again, this is the stuff that is going to not only propel you into higher ranks, but give you the tools necessary to begin learning more advanced mechanics. I can't stress enough, the difference in learning how to play tight, controlled, and intentional Rocket League can be against players who only know how to hit the ball as hard as they can. Deliberately giving the ball away on every possession, while not a crime, is at the very least spitting in the face of your teammates. And if you only play ones and want to make some snide comment about how you don't have teammates to spit on, then do us all a favor and run down to your local pharmacy. Ask the clerk to direct you towards the contraceptives. Here, you're going to find and buy the biggest box of condoms you can afford, because on the off chance that you're given the opportunity to copulate with the opposite sex, it's in everyone's best interest that you keep that kind of dumb from making more people. Thank you for watching.